questions for the panel, comments? No? You're all exhausted from the day? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is really um, uh, uh, for Julieta because uh, uh, it's, um, in a sense, breaking news. There was a, a, a report this morning on uh, uh, National Public Radio in the United States that a new law in Bolivia allows children as young as 10 to work legally, uh, but supporters of the legislation say that the law guarantees legal protections and fair wages for children who have been working regardless of laws against it. And when you put the statistics for Bolivia up there, uh, uh, I uh, recalled hearing this on the radio this morning. I'm, I'm just wondering, is this the kind of thing that PAHO gets engaged in? Is there, are there ways to influence this kind of uh, uh, law that's uh, taking place in Bolivia? I guess we would need to um, look at it carefully before we intervene in any country. We have to, you, you know very well, we have to look with the government and with the Ministry of Health. It hurt my heart. And we last year did something that I think is unique in the regions. We organized the GITI, Grupo Interagencial Contra el Trabajo Infantil, an interagency group against fighting against child work. We are nine UN organizations in the regional office. We're working together. We developed a one-year process of consultations and discussion looking at the evidence, and we decided that we would all work with the only target to try to eliminate at least one of the worst forms of child work, and that was uh, domestic work, because it's the most hidden. It's inside the doors and nobody reaches it. It is rural, it's urban, and it goes from five years up all the way. So I wish, um, from the personal point of view, I cannot talk in this moment on behalf of PAHO. I wish we could do something to change that reality. It is unadmissible from the public health point of view, in my personal opinion. Um, I will have to look at it with um, Dr. Altian and, and all the people. Anyone else? Yes? very intrigued by the uh, Indonesia presentation on the amount of funding that the government puts in for uh, actually the occupational health. Uh, and w what was interesting is like uh, you had the figures even for informal and formal sector workers. And that's what I was kind of, you know, so you have a program like uh, in terms of separating it out like this is for informal and formal. Okay, that, that, it's kind of a clarificatory, but I thought it's important for other uh, to bring it out because uh, I think everyone should know that there is a country who, where they are putting so much of money and they have increased it over time and specifically for the informal sector worker. And one, another kind of clarificatory question from Thailand, when you, your first slide you were talking about, you know, different kind of occupational hazards. So was it like a kind of a survey that was done? You said some 400 and something uh, households uh, that was done. So was it a perception or was actual testing done? Example uh, that, uh, uh, that I show, but uh, your question is, uh, you want to know that about the data? No, no. Sorry, yeah, yeah, where yeah. people perceive that they're ill or they have these problems. Because we have a lot of data in India on that, but I, we don't have like data where people actually go for screening and do that. So that's what I'm asking. This is the hospital done this information. They, they do uh, health check up. And uh, we have, an, uh, uh, because it's very important that we should know the data and what happened, uh, because work related to uh, like, like uh, sickness that related to to work is different. Uh, is depend on what uh, occupation. Like uh, 
Doll making, they have a lot of problem because they work with the cotton. So they have a problem with lung. And uh, at the same time, for the stone carving, they have a problem in terms of uh, lungs also. And uh, healings like this. So, so uh, this is done in terms of Professional, yeah, Pro professional one, not 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 the uh, NGO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's professional. Can I clarify? Okay. Can I clarify? Okay. So in Indonesia, definitely the funding that I talk is for occupational health program, mainly managed by the Directorate of Occupational Health Sport within the Ministry of Health. And then for the big scale companies, they're really using their own funding. So the private um, contribution for the occupational safety and health for the big scale companies are really, um, there is no subsidize from the government. And also for the universal coverage also, we divide it into two. For the general health claims, it's under BPGS1. And for the occupational health related diseases and occupational accidents under BPGS2. But this model that I analyzed, uh, it is not fair because the BPGS1 will go bankrupt and BPGL, BPGS2 will be um, uh, very fat because there is no surveillance on occupational diseases. They only uh, receive a claim of occupational accident. So this is the situation in Indonesia that we need to fix, and but we are working on that. Thank you. Yes. Child labor is the issue of the ILO, actually. And if the, the information is correct, it's the obviously against violation of the, our Convention 138 minimum wage. And to be clarified, uh, the, the Convention 138 defined the, the minimum age is 15. But even for the, the over the 15 years old, even uh, if the, the work itself is hazardous to child's uh, health and safety, education, and the moral hazard. In that case, it's the child labor. So the, I'm very shocked to, to yes, that news, if the, the information is correct, if it's not acceptable. Thank you. Anyone else? I would like to add more information about the uh, occupational disease in Thailand that uh, she says. Uh, because right now in Thailand, we have occupational disease clinic uh, in the general hospital. About 90% uh, uh, of total hospital, of total government hospital uh, had uh, like a, a, a occupational uh, physician to give the diagnosis of occupational disease. Right now, uh, we have like a dat database of confirmation case of occupational disease from the compensation funding. And another thought is uh, like uh, the hospital that will have a like a project and uh, the physician give diagnosis of oc occupational disease. So uh, we have the database that Charu asked. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Ivan. I just want to, to, to make a comment regarding the, the session, both sessions on, on occupational health in pharma sector. It, it seems very interesting to hear from, from the countries and how things are organized in the countries regarding informal sector workers. And uh, it's, uh, it struck me that most of the the organization, the, the institution arrangements, they are old arrangements that, that reflect the, the current paradigm of the organized sector, big companies, the, the structure, the laws, the services, how they are organized. And since the last 20 years when we uh, 
when the globalization occurred and dramatic changes in the way the labor markets are, are organized, uh, our systems in occupational health and in healthcare in general are still catered to, to, to big enterprises and the, and the laws and the service provision are catering to, to big enterprises. Therefore, this, uh, this presentation from countries were very, very pointing out to the tremendous need to stimulate healthcare reforms that are adapted to the new labor market conditions. And this was one of the purposes also, one of the objectives of the Global Plan of Action on Workers' Health, to address also the health impacts of employment policies mm -hmm. and how employment policies produce inequalities and how health systems can respond to the inequalities or challenges produced by the, by the employment systems and the collaboration between health and labor and the employment sector also to forecast and to try to address and fix, to anticipate problems and fix them while the employment policies are changing. Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, since the organizers are hovering, uh, Francie wants to make a last comment before we close the uh, session. I, I, I would like to comment on that. Um, we've, we've stressed the importance of bureaucracy at local government level in Accra and in Ahmedabad in India, and in Durban in South Africa, the legislation governing markets is identical to each other, and it was written under the British colonial governments. And the terminology and the discourse is still the same. Now, one can say, oh, that's in a sense amusing, but the institutional architecture is wired for the wrong century at the moment. <laughs> And, and, and that's really serious because you, you're not going to change that easily because the vested interests in those departments are all in terms of let's keep our old definition of, and it's environmental health, public health, occupational health. And it's going to, so, so the national level, the, the national local disconnect is strong, but actually at local level, it's hard to know who to report some of the occupational problems to because each department says, a la Tom Lehrer, that's not my problem. You know, go to somebody else if you will. It's a really important point, Ivan. Well, thank you, Francie. Um, unfortunately, you. we're going to have to close. And Clarion, uh, we're we're finished with the uh, panel. Then. Thank you, Dr. Howard, and thank you, panel. Oh.